Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to a very early start here in Cape Town. It's actually my final day in Cape Town. Tomorrow I'm headed back towards Europe for the start of a six or seven month driving tour around Europe and North America. The flying leg, the flyaway section of Drive the World is nearly over. But today I'm seeing things out in style because I'm off to meet up with Andre, the owner of the Frisco 911. Now, if you don't know what the Frisco 911 is, it's effectively the 1969 version of my 911 Carrera T, or my 911 Carrera T is the 2018 version of the Frisco 911. Basically, when I was trying to design the, the, the modifications or the wrap and the livery for my car, I was looking for inspiration online when I came across the Frisco 911. I fell in love with it immediately and decided to essentially copy it in as many ways as possible. The owner of that car, Andre, lives here in South Africa. So whilst the car isn't here, I thought it was only right that I go and meet up with him and hear the story of his car and how he felt when he saw my car for the first time. So he said, wake up early, have your coffee. We're going to go on a hoon in a couple of cars. And then I'm going to grab him for a sit down chat to learn more about the Frisco and his impressions of my career at Let's go. My name is Andre Besaidnet, I'm from South Africa and I own a Porsche which, is, which has become known as Frisco in the world. Well, you know the name Frisco, Frisco used to be a very basic coffee in South Africa. Uh, my late mother lived with me for the last 10 odd months of her life. And one day I got home, she was very grumpy. I asked, what was wrong, Ma? She said, nothing. And I asked again, what is wrong? Same story, nothing. And when I really pressed her, she looked at me with beady eyes and she said, you know, everything in this house is so grand. She says, but I hate the coffee. Can't you just get me proper coffee, Frisco? I called my right-hand man and I said, Nicholas, please go and get Omar some proper coffee. Uh, Frisco is a chicory-based coffee. The next day I walked in and, uh, and she was very happy. The moral of the story is, I remind myself that we should never get ahead of ourselves. No matter where you develop to in life, understand where you come from. And I've had a wonderful privilege of getting involved in the motor industry and meeting amazing people and, and uh, being exposed to things that I never ever thought would be possible. A guy like David Piper last year at Silverstone, um, him and his wife Liz, um, David is well into his 80s. He came to my pit, walked probably for 700 odd meters sat down, come and say hi to me. I mean, one of my ultimate heroes. And uh, that's the thing about the motorsport industry. We're all equal and people find time for normal guys like me and, and you, and they share their stories with us. And that's why the community is so amazing. So the Frisco story is really about not getting ahead of yourself. And, uh, and I just remind myself of my late mother whenever I see that name Frisco. It started off as a 69 911, um, was sold into South Africa. I bought the car in the early 1990s, got involved in motor racing and then got ahead of myself, crashed it in spectacular form at Kailami, um, wrote the car off and um, you know, you go through all the emotions and the car then left my life. I fixed it up, sold it as a road car and it disappeared for 25 odd years. About a, two and a half years ago now, one of my mates wanted to buy a car from me and I saw this dilapidated thing in the corner of his... Uh, of his garage. I recognized the car and he was kind enough and, and you know large enough to sell the car back to me so I took it back and then I decided I can't rebuild it into a racing car because it was so skew you know you couldn't open the door it made a clack noise if you did it. So everybody is is making their own um, of a portion particularly the classic ones. So I looked at it and I, I thought to myself what will be the best color that I can think of and I came up with this army green we mixed, mixed a little bit of silver in it 
and because the only other colors on the 911s was really silver black and orange the lights that's how we changed it and uh, we struck some chords in the world and some people then like those colors and they started writing about it and and so forth I've now come to sit next to you at what could be the most sensible or, or the most awkward moment <laughs> because as most of you guys will now know and a lot of people online will know uh, I got a 2018 911 Carrera T and decided to pay homage to this car that you have such a connection and story with and the question I want to ask you on camera what was your reaction when you first saw my car with its new look which is essentially your Frisco look? Well, very unexpectedly, you really put me into the poo because my wife and my baby is 10 months old. They drive in a 1969 11 without air conditioning. And when people picked up on your car that resembled very much the design of my car, they thought that I actually recreated the car and for the benefit of the family, this is now the air conditioning car that we're going to tour the world. So I got an excited phone call to say, is that true? And I had absolutely no idea what has happened. So you've created an expectation and I had to go and look at what happened over here. But, you know, as the story goes with liveries of cars, um, the Roth, famous Rothmans, the famous Pink Pig, you don't own these things. Um, you just think about it, that car and the livery I designed, um, together with Kualandi, my wife, we thought it out very carefully. And if anything, I was complimented that you liked it as well, or whoever your designer was. Um, and I think it came out fantastic. And when the two cars were together in Australia, man, I mean, what a story did that create? That's exactly it. And that was only ever the aim, was, was to pay homage, was to take direct inspiration from your car. Because yes. I didn't know your car wasn't a factory car. When yes. I came across yes. it, I thought that was just a factory car that had some, you know, really great old rally racing heritage. I saw a little bit that you'd posted on your Instagram yes. page, yes. Um, but didn't know. And we only started speaking, we only connected after yes. I'd released yes. my car and yes. uh, you won't know this but I actually tried to reach out to you in advance but did it incorrectly via anyway boring we didn't reach yes. out so the first time we spoke my car was already out so I was a little bit like hello nice to meet you I really hope you're not going to burn my car down but now we have these two cars which are doing relatively similar things around yeah. the world because you're traveling a lot with the Frisco where have you been so far look we decided to do Australasia first. So I'd went to Australia, New Zealand, you've gone to Australia, so we didn't do that band. The World Cup is this year, the Rugby World Cup is in Japan. You've just completed Japan. Yeah, unfortunately we, not with my car. We're so gonna go, we're gonna go to Japan. So in a funny way, the story of your car and, and my car has overlapped with each other. And um, in speaking to you and you know sharing the little stories, people think it's very glamorous to drive around in a, let me call it a rental car that's then shipped around the world. One, it takes a lot of logistical effort. Two, it's very challenging to do. But three, man, it creates stories. So who wants to drive, with respect to rental car companies, who wants to drive a rental car? So your car is recognizable in the world. Um, mine is not that we ever intended it to be. You know, just it just happened overnight. People started recognizing it. And the story about Frisco, you know, nobody would have known, except my close family, what it meant. Now everybody knows about it, but that's the benefit of social media. And we've connected with each other and um, Apart from the Frisco Frisco, I understand you're also a Leo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both Leos for those into their star well, signs. They but there's only Leos and wannabes. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, you're right, it's a great way to celebrate your mom and that whole, yes. you know, her, her memory and that whole story. I think it's fantastic. But also, as you say, like, our story, the new one that we're creating, you know, you recently set up the Instagram page specifically for the car. I'm obviously documenting what I'm doing this year and people are now following these two cars as they go around the world and they're kind of cousins or, or distant, yes. very distant cousins. Yes. Um, and I, I, it's such a shame that you weren't in Melbourne when we got the two cars together because yes. that was a sight to see. I have to say I was a little upset because my vinyl wrap did nothing to the paint on your car, which was absolutely <laughs> stunning. I was saying like, oh, mine looks like mud. Um, and I'm in love with your wooden roof rack again much cooler than mine uh, but maybe I could say mine had modern uh, elements that complemented it but I think we've got to get the cars together again at some point right well I've got no doubt you know yeah. your world program I mean if anything it, it's expired me inspired me again because traveling the world with these type of cars I mean the one thing about the motor industry uh, maybe a little bit different than other clubs or communities we all help each other you know there is just 
absolutely no envy. We support each other. Um, and the amazing stories that come from it. You know, people that you connect to. Peter Squires at Talem Town. I mean, a gentleman, 81 years old. He just came to visit me in South Africa. He's got this amazing place. He met you there. So it's the inspiration of getting together and actually sharing on a world platform the love that we have um, for motor vehicles. It's your career. I was lucky enough, um, I'm embarrassed at law, that my motor love rolled over into my life career as well, my practice as well, and, and it's given me opportunities of pursuing my passion, a little bit of motorsport, I'm an amateur, but I could practice law at the same time, and uh, and it's fantastic that we can mix it up. Well, there it's, we go. And it's fantastic having you in South Africa. Oh, well, I, mean, I was about to say, you have been the most incredible host for my week here in Cape Town. You've looked after me incredibly well. Most of the videos that you've seen have been with thanks to Andre introducing me to various characters, and there's such an amazing car scene here. Yeah. I think maybe, you know, Frisco at the minute, I believe, is on his way to Japan. Yes. Uh, my karate on the way back to Europe, but I think at some point we need to get them back here to South Africa and maybe do something. No doubt we'll, yeah. uh, we'll connect to each other, follow each other, and um, as soon as the opportunity arises, it's got to be we'll, done, right? we'll put them next to each other and then we'll have some serious <laughs> chats about the good, the bad, oh, and the ugly. Well, I'm so glad you don't hate me for uh, yeah, trying not, to just copy, not, your, not, copy your car. Not, <laughs> not at all, if anything. Amazing. Thank you so much. It's been brilliant. Blessings. Great to meet you. <laughs>